In this video, I'm going to cover a problem similar to 1115. And ultimately, we're calculating margin, turnover, ROI, and residual income. And I realize you've already done those calculations and used those formulas in prior exercises. But in those previous problems, they went ahead and gave us the numbers directly. Sales, net operating income, average total assets. And this one, we've either got to find those or do calculations. One thing that they do not give us directly that we need in our calculations for ROI and residual income is average operating assets. So our first requirement is calculating that. Now, where do we find assets? We find assets on our balance sheet. Here's the problem though. Not all of these assets listed may be operating assets. So if you remember from the chapter, for something to be an operating asset, it needs to help contribute towards the company providing its product or service to the customer. And in fact, those operating assets for this company are cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and plant and equipment. Why isn't an investment in another company an operating asset? Again, it's not helping us provide a product or service to our customer. It's just what we end up doing when we have some idle cash to get an extra return. Land, if it had been land that we have our retail store on or manufacturing facility and we operate out of it, then it would have been an operating asset. But this is land for future development. We're not doing anything with it in order to help us provide our product or service. So therefore, it's not an operating asset at this particular point. So our focus again is cash, accounts receivable, inventory, and plant and equipment. So let's go ahead and clear a little bit of space over here to the right in order to do this calculation. Now, to get average operating assets, first we need to total up these assets for the beginning of the year and also the end of the year on this balance sheet. Beginning of the year, if we total up these four assets, is going to be $1,910,000. The end of the year balances is going to be $1,950,000. Now, if you recall, to get an average of these, we're going to add them together and divide by two. So all we need to do is take $1,910,000 plus $1,950,000 divide by two, and we get average operating assets for the year is $1,930,000. Again, that's something that we need to do in our future calculations of ROI and also residual income. So let's go ahead and take a look at requirement two, where we're asked to calculate margin, turnover, and return on investment, also known as ROI. I'm going to do these one by one. Now keep in mind, back in A201, you had already tackled the calculation of margin. I know it's been a while since you took the course, though. And the formula for that has stayed the same. It's net operating income divided by sales. Where do we find that information? We find that information on our income statement. Keep in mind, net operating income is not the same thing as net income. Net operating income is before we subtract out our interest and tax expenses. And in this particular scenario, net operating income is $679,360. Sales is given on our income statement as the first line item. It's $4,246,000. So 679360 divided by $4,246,000 equals 16%. Really, it would have been 0.16, but margin is always calculated as a percentage. So we convert it to 16%. What this is saying is our profit before we subtract out our interest in taxes is 16% of our sales dollars. Now our next one that we move on to is turnover. And again, this formula should look very familiar from A201. And it is sales divided by average operating assets. Sales, again, we get from our income statement up here is $4,246,000. And we divide that by average operating assets. And we already calculated that in requirement one was the average of the cash AR inventory plant and equipment for both years. And going from part number one is $1,930,000. Divide that into our sales. And you can see here that turnover is not a percentage. We don't convert it. Turnover is a number of times and here it's 2.2 and if we think about what that means we're saying on average our operating assets our cash AR inventory plant and equipment we turn those over two times into sales 
And you can see here I've got listed our margin and turnover from our prior calculations, margin of 16%, turnover of 2.2. .2. Why do I have those listed? Because next we're asked to calculate ROI or return on investment. One way to interpret that is by taking margin times turnover, again, taking our prior calculations of 16% times 2.2 .2 equals, and again, this is also a percentage return on investment, equals 35.20%. It's important to know when things are a percentage versus a number of times. So overall, this is one way we can calculate it based on margin and turnover, but keep in mind there's another direct way to calculate ROI. It would be net operating income that we also showed here in margin of 679,360 divided by average operating assets, which again from part one was 1,930,000. If we had divided that by our average operating assets, again, we could have also directly gotten 34. 5.20%. It's nice to be able to calculate in both ways and it proves that our overall return on our assets is a combination of being profitable, that's what margin is asking us, and also utilizing our assets wisely, not having too much, converting them into sales well. So let's go ahead and move on to part three. Um, a different calculation here is asking us for our residual income. Whereas margin and turnover were either percentages or a number of times, residual income is a dollar amount. And in fact, the formula you recall from the chapter is net operating income minus minimum required return. We've been through it several times already that the net operating income is going to come from our income statement and that's going to be $679,360. But we're going to have to do an additional calculation to figure out minimum required return. And in fact, we calculate that by taking the minimum percentage required rate that we require, and that's listed over here that this company requires a 15% times its average operating assets. So this company required 15%. If you recall from part one, our average operating assets are 1,930,000. Take our 1,930,000 times 15%. That gets us a minimum required return that we needed in terms of dollars of 289,500. Subtract that from what we did earn which is 679,360. And that means our residual income or excess above what we were minimally required to earn is 389,860. That's a good thing, it's positive. We earned above what we were required. Can residual income be negative? Absolutely, it definitely could be negative. If we're currently earning less than 15%, then this definitely would be a negative calculation.